J'ai pas vraiment beaucoup envie d'en passer avec ces demoiselles qui sont sur un vélo. C'est mon vous problème. Êtes contre le cyclisme féminin. Vous êtes contre les courses. Oui. Je suis contre le cyclisme féminin. Pour moi, je vais vous dire, voir Ulrike et Meifart faire du son en hauteur, voir Evelyn Ashford faire du 100 mètres, c'est très joli. C'est très joli à voir. C'est un très beau sport. C'est un très. Non, non, laisse-moi terminer. C'est extrêmement beau à voir. Le sport doit avoir un côté esthétique. Quand on enlève le côté esthétique du sport, il y perd 50%. Non, mais c'est volontiers, était une exception. C'est tout. C'est mon opinion personnelle. Je n'engage que moi. Si je n'aime pas le cyclisme féminin, j'ai le droit de ne pas l'aimer. J'ai le droit de ne pas apprécier. On m'a demandé mon avis là-dessus, je l'ai donné. Point final, ça n'engage que moi. Si elles veulent faire du vélo, c'est leur problème, mais c'est pas le mien. On m'a demandé ce que j'en pensais, je l'ai dit, c'est tout. Elle est très très musclée et je pense qu'au niveau d'une femme. Elle est belle à regarder, elle est belle dans l'effort. Vous, vous êtes moche, je suis désolé. Ah non, 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 vous allez un peu loin, les gens comme ça. Vous êtes accès vous attaquez directement Jeanne Il n'y a pas des Non, 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 j'attaque en général le cyclisme féminin. Je crois que je regarderai le cyclisme féminin. The long term goal is to not be the bit on the side. The biggest thing that I want to see changed is the ability to access free to view women's cycling. Because you cannot see it unless you're already invested in it. Every single women's cycling race is always exciting, it's always thrilling, there's always attacking, there's always things going on, and the sites have to be willing to put these stories at the top of the headlines. If you have this story and then you put it 16th on the list, nobody's going to scroll down and see it. Put it at the top, fill these pages with the stories, put it out, build it and they will come. But if you don't do that, then no one's going to see it. Before 2019, I had no idea about competitive cycling. I mean, I'd heard of the Tour de France and I'd heard of Lance Armstrong, but that's the extent of my cycling knowledge before 2019, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> So before the season started, there was the preliminary race calendar for the team. And we were able to go through the calendar and select A, B, C races, A being, I absolutely want to do that race, B being, I don't really want to do that race, but I will, and C being, do not put me in that race. And I did put A for the Tour de France. Part of me still feels that imposter syndrome, especially being so new and feeling like, oh, I haven't earned this privilege to race in the first ever Paris-Roubaix. I feel now I've started to earn my spot a bit more. I've always been really hard on myself. I've had several moments with some of the ladies recently where they slap me in the face and say, this is your first year, like get, give yourself a break, like calm down. I think in those moments I feel a bit of shame because some of the women that have been so supportive of me while also giving me that kind of kick have been those that haven't been able to race. Cycling was never something that was destined for me. Growing up, I loved sport, but I never had those, those opportunities that is so often handed to so many people in cycling. I guess the reason that I throw myself so wholeheartedly into pretty much everything that I do, or everything that I want to do, is again, it's a, it's representative of the way that I grew up. Like, I had to fight for myself. 
I had no other option other than to just do it myself. If I wanted something, I had to do it myself. If I wanted to look after myself, I had to do it myself. And if I wanted to go and get something, if I wanted to pay for something, I had to get a job because there was nobody else out there who was gonna give me the money or help me. I've always been somebody who, when I want something, I will do everything I can to get it. <laughs> so it was only when I was, I don't know, 20, 22, 23. A friend of mine asked me if I wanted to do a, a sportive and she said, well, it's a hundred miles. What do you want to do? And I said, well, of course I'm going to do a hundred miles. But the only sticking point was that I didn't have a bike. So I went onto Gumtree and I searched for bikes and I found this old aluminium bike for 120 quid and I had no idea what I was doing. And then I realized I was pretty fast and then from there I, I just had the bug. I just decided I had to start racing and well, here I am. Even though I didn't grow up in cycling, my parents always used to ride their bikes and they were really passionate about watching bike races. So we would spend some of our holidays watching the tour. As a kid, I have to say that I didn't really get it because we like waited on a mountain for like four hours, which when you're like six years old feels like forever. And then they passed in like five seconds and that was it. So this is my fixed collarbone. <laughs> You can still see the um, screw kind of coming through the skin and the plate. Um, that's probably the injury that makes you a real cyclist, or at least I was told so. Um, but still didn't, wouldn't have needed it <laughs> to feel like a real cyclist, I think. If I wouldn't have already signed for 2022, I wouldn't have continued but I, f I think I shouldn't get out of mind that I'm still riding my bike, I'm still able to walk after a three column fracture of my spine. That was frightening enough for me to like question everything. When I think back to that person in that hospital bed, I, was, I just wanted to be in less pain and not end up in a wheelchair. And suddenly you're like, oh, I would love to be selected for the tour. I would love, so your expectations and your wishes always shift with like how you feel. I think you can always wish for more. If you win one race, you want to win two and so on. And I just try to get myself into that mindset that after all, I was able to ride and race as a professional rider for now my fifth year. And this is probably more than I would have asked for before competing in the Swift Academy. I try to like lower my expectations because then I'm not disappointed or frustrated about it, but maybe can cherish and uh, appreciate what I have. Weil das ist jetzt in dem Bereich ist das komplett starr. Und der kann der kann nicht mehr schwingen. When I think back of my time working in a hospital, even though I was really tired sometimes, it's a really rewarding job. For sure, it was quite a change for me to then come into cycling, suddenly only caring about myself. Well done, patient, well done. This year is really the first time that I earn enough money to really like live of it. And now you put your hand, you put your I did my last shift in January this year, knowing that I can do it and I don't have to worry about paying my rent. It was quite a relief. They can, they can wait.
If you told 14-year-old Abby, she she might be doing the Tour de France um, six years later, I, I would not have believed. <laughs> Even being on a world tour team, being a professional cyclist, my 14-year-old self would not have believed even being a paid professional cyclist is even possible, let alone there being a women's tour de France in in Keep the going, first going. year that I'm a pro as well. It's just, I feel very lucky. I've just watched it for so many years and just thought that's that, that's the hardest race, surely. It's one of the hardest races in the, in the world you can possibly do. Everybody watches the Tour. Even normal people have heard of the Tour de France. You know, it's, it's such an, an enormous thing. And to do the first one in oh, I don't know, however many years since, since the last one in Tour de France, it was, to, to do the first one would be just an absolute dream. It was difficult at the beginning, knowing I wasn't going to uni when everybody else at my age was. And I, I just went into full-time cycling at that point. And it feels like, what if I um, you know, drop out of cycling? I've got nothing, you know, I've got no qualifications, nothing. I spent, I think, half of the race in the, in the breakaway, and I was kind of the last rider standing. Um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty special hitting the cobbles and knowing you're like, I'm like, I'm leading Roubaix. Just happy to make it to the velodrome, actually. Yeah, I would say Tanya and I have developed a good relationship. The first time we roomed together and the first time we ever met was at the hotel at Perry roubaix She got a kick out of me giggling at Instagram reels of dogs. my suitcase and all over the... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> As a professional cyclist, being abroad and being in those really lonely moments is particularly hard. So much of your life is about performance. And I've had a few moments this last season where I've not been performing well. And then on top of that, I've been feeling lonely and um, have hit some really low lows. Belgium is nine hours ahead of Seattle, and I would have moments of really wanting to call someone, but then realizing that they're asleep. I think that made it even more lonely. This tape? Yeah, I think this is a good one. Better for kids. Yes. Kids that you told school, barbecue, chin up, nice hands, good stretch. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring it back up, hands up. Can I see this, boys? How long did you know you were gonna have that surgery, though? 
Why didn't you say anything? Yeah. It was just funny to wake up to photos of and texts saying that you'd been through surgery. <laughs> it's okay. It's, I'm glad it's all better though. Last year, being out, well, the whole season with concussion, that was, that was the hardest thing to process mentally. Not because I had to take time off the bike, not because I was injured, but because of the nature of the illness, because of the nature of what it does to you. It changes everything. It affects every part of your bodily systems. It gives you headaches, it gives you mood disorders. You can't talk to people, you feel sick, you can't walk down the road, you can't read things, you can't look at your phone, you can't do anything. Those were the really dark days and those were the, the hardest days to get through. And I was pretty fortunate to have such good support, but not everybody gets through those days. And yeah, it sucks that I have to be off the bike and it really sucks when I saw that MRI scan and I realized that I wasn't gonna make the Tour de France team. I started getting really bad chest pain and there was fluid around my heart. A week later, I was diagnosed with pericarditis. COVID has completely screwed up. And I don't know if it's gonna screw it forever. I don't know if that's my career over. But like, I still have my life. I still have my head. And last year I didn't have that. And that was pretty scary. Oh look, there's, there's a crash. Mm. That was probably, where was I? Is that sector one? Oh, this is, no, this is in front of me actually, because I came past Alan. Oh, there, mm. there. that's Max, <laughs> that was me. Mm. There are fewer, there are fewer races, there are fewer riders mm. on the team, so there are fewer races, but that, that means there are a fewer opportunities to actually get a World Tour win for your team. I think it's going to be really aggressive. There's not a question of, can we do 21 days? You know, we train every single day, of course we can do 21 days. I've never understood why it's been so male dominated. Why can't I do it if they do it? I've never been able to say, I'm gonna be able to do that. I've, I'd always want to win a yellow jersey. I'd never been able to until this year, potentially. I can't even believe I'm saying that. So it's it's been a bit of bit of a downhill journey since March. Spray my wrist at Nokura, I had stomach issues and then got COVID. But yeah, I found lots of things to do to keep me busy, painting, going out for walks. I'm not even thinking about bikes, I you completely switch off from everything. Do you think you might be doing the women's tour de France? Spots are still open, but the problem is that coming late into the season, not being on your best shape, um, and then kind of like slowly coming into it, then COVID kind of threw me back. So yeah, now it's mid of June. Um, we're not gonna have a race to like Duro and Tour de France. So it's not like I can show, oh, like I'm back. Um, so yeah, I don't know actually.
the moment, when I'm honest, like the way I'm riding now, I would also not select before the tour. I can be good and helpful on a good day, but I can be also completely useless on a bad day. So I really wanted to have a chance at least to be selected. It was just like one of those special things that you thought you're never going to be able to do because it wasn't on the woman's calendar. Speaking with Tim and Daniel, just talking about my training and what the race program is looking like and discussing, okay, yeah, you need to do the women's tour, no expectations to get more pack experience so that you'll be better so-and-so stages of the Tour de France. So it's kind of like, okay, well, I'm obviously going to be prioritizing the Tour de France in my schedule at this point. It's pretty incredible. World Tour Company is the British rider. Sprint out for the top as Veronica Ewers now comes up to try and challenge Elise Shabby, but Shabby just glances across out of there. Battle back to take maximum 10 points at the summit. No gifts in the leading group today. I really wanted to ride the tour. I texted our uh, team director, Daniel, because I was just having a moment where I was angry. And I felt like, no, you know, I, I should do it. And so I messaged him, you know, maybe you don't think I can do it, but I can, and I'm strong enough, and I really want to. And then he calls me the next day, and he starts off with explaining how they pick a team. So as he's saying this, I'm like, right, okay, so he's just gonna tell me I'm not gonna do it. And then all of a sudden he says, but we decided you should do the tour. And I was like, what? I think I'm the most excited about the Tour de France than I have been about anything in cycling. If I were retired on August 1st, I would be happy because I rode the Tour de France Femmes. I would love to see more mothers being able to balance being a mother and a professional athlete. And we're seeing now, you know, we're seeing teams support their athletes through pregnancy, which is so incredibly important. You need to know and have that security that when you have your child, you still have your job. I mean, we've seen countless examples of women who've had their child and then they come back even stronger. It doesn't make us weaker. It doesn't make us less dependable. If anything, it makes you a better bike rider. Yeah, I think i still questioning why I'm there <laughs> um, and questioning if I should be there. Someday I'm going to be a player, <laughs> not just holding on for dear life, <laughs> seeing how long I can be with the big hitters. We'll see. Voilà pour évidemment cette équipe IF Education Tico SVB. You know, I, I think 
think every single woman who is a professional cyclist has been asked when she says she races, oh, so you race the Tour de France. Of course, up to this point, we've always said, well, no, but we race like that kind of race. You know, and it's incredibly exciting for me that I am part of this really historical year that it's coming back. I always think of my daughter and that someday, hopefully, she'll look at it and be really proud of me and feel inspired that I was part of that return. This is my daughter, here you go. Good luck, Mom, on the Tour de France. Ale, ale, love you. <laughs> <laughs> so was there anything else I was supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's changing so fast. It's changing and people are realizing and and men's cycling is getting more exciting because the races are getting shorter and people are attacking more and you say, hey, this is just women's cycling, we've been doing this for years, maybe you should come and watch us. But they'll realize, they'll realize. We need to celebrate this first women's Tour de France. We need to celebrate these 14 World Tour teams we've got and all of these riders that are getting paid a really good salary. Let's just take a moment to celebrate that. Then let's move on and see where we can progress further. It hasn't really sunk in, I would say. I, th I was talking to a friend yesterday and, you know, I don't think it will really settle until after the fact. There's, and I mean, it feels good to get the first race under the belt um, just because there was so much hype and anticipation for it. And so now we're just in the race now and being able to take it stage by stage. Um, so I'm glad that we are in the race at this point, but I don't think it'll really, really sink in or I will be able to really comprehend everything that is happening this week until maybe a week from now, maybe a couple weeks from now, but it's just massive what's happening. And so I think, um, yeah, it'll be tough to really, really acknowledge where we're at until uh, afterwards. <laughs> it's been pretty cool. I get a lot of comments from friends and family back home. Um, yeah, it's been really cool for particularly my parents to follow along um, to see um, what it's all about. It's the one who up. Yeah. Oh, Belgian champion. I was with her. It was oh, so did you bad. see? Mm. Yes. In the narrow road, she went uh, in the grass. Yeah, I saw that. She couldn't come up again. Oh, no. <laughs> she was crazy. I'm so proud of you. Did you find those funny shorts? Yeah, where we get standing on the other 50, side, just 50 meters the by the finish. The last yeah. Near the finish. Yeah. Before the right turn or after? After. after. Thank you.
This is for Joe. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. He loved it off. Yeah. Um, you know, we could buy clothes. <laughs> so different to be right there with the crowd. It's just yeah. so exciting. <laughs> First floor? Um, second for me. Oh. Fancy Emily. <laughs> Socks on. Uh, Slippers in case he has to walk out to see any fans, and he's got a mask today because our team doctor, you know, pretty strict. How nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Take a picture of yeah. him. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 It's really cool, huh? Yes. No, it's so the first moment. It's historical. It's, yeah. it's so beautiful. Yeah. So they can see. Where to grow to, that's possible. Anything yeah. is possible. But they, I'll be the one at your bus being like, hey, you remember me? Oh, <laughs> no. Emily Musov. Un petit peu plus loin, cap sur l'Allemagne avec une couverture. Mettre de l'ambiance dans cette zone de départ. I would say there are two that are pretty. could be dangerous. Yeah. Okay. They're so, narrow, and when I did it, there was gravel on the road. Yeah. And I was shocked yesterday because when we did the. Oh, we can't. Yeah. I just, just it, we thought when we came down that. You saw me go off the road. And it was like, <laughs> I thought I was going down. Again. It was like gravity. <laughs> and we thought they'd resurface it before the race. Yeah. It was just as bad, wasn't it? It was I, terrible. I was, it was the box who pushed me. Coming off the steep mountain. Oh, yeah. 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 You should have seen me. It felt yeah, yeah. so bad. I was like, if I break the teeth, it's bike right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, <laughs> it's a lot worse than Strider Bianchi. Just not like Strider's bigger stones. It's much worse. Uh, I would say there isn't much like loose gravel, but it's like really gnarly, chunky stuff. Is it embedded into the road? Some of it, or no, some of it is not. Pretty solid to have a top result, first world tour top result, top five. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the luck was on my side today. <laughs> Good job, Emily. Thank you. Good job. Come on, just let us go. There's Twenty-two teams, or make someone else chase. Yeah. So they don't chase Why are they Good job. Absolutely fantastic. Right? I actually just saw this video that La Tour Femme on Instagram posted mm -hmm. of um, the climb that they were on. And um, you can hear my dad so clearly screaming, Go Veronica! Just, uh, I, it's just amazing seeing all the spectators. And it seems like every day there are more and more, Ooh. There are more and more people coming to the races and more and more people even reaching out to me on social media that like have never been interested in cycling before being like, oh my God, this is amazing. And it's really satisfying <laughs> to show that, you know, like people want to see women's racing. S'il vous plaît, laissez un passage.
Seriously. <laughs> Great work. Thanks. How far past the finish? I got the bonus. Nice! I don't know what it is. Now you're not negative anymore. No, the bonus. The special bonus. Yeah. It's not the bonus. No. It's something. Yeah, it's right. I'm gonna go back to the bus. Okay. Where's the song? Il s'agit de l'allemand de Catherine Hammes pour la formation IMB du pays. Less than a year ago, I was definitely a nobody in the cycling world. I still fangirl over the like main names in the peloton. I don't think cycling has a lifespan. And I'm 31 now, but I don't see, I don't see it as I've got five years left. I mean, Anna makes the best she's ever been and she's nearly 40. So why should I even think about stopping at 31 years old? You tell me. Catch your breath. You have water, of course. Tip top. I am really overwhelmed by all of the support I've gotten from people back home. My aunt um, texted me today that she was so proud of me that it hurt. <laughs> but it's been really interesting and fun being recognized by other people in the Peloton. Um, I mean, people today were saying my name in the peloton, so it was an interesting, I mean, I'm not a nobody anymore, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's not the best because there's a lot of opportunity when you're a nobody. I am proud that this race is proving to the world that women have the ability and should have the space to be just as competitive as men. Okay, so what we're gonna do? Uh, and I really hope that it's inspiring the next generation and yeah, just younger girls to go for what they want to do with their athletic endeavors and whatever they want to do in life. Progress is being made and this is just proof of that. Ah. 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 Ah.
Reims, chaque jour était plus intense que le précédent. Là, nous en terminons également hein, du côté des, des arrivées avec celle euh, qui aura été impressionnante par l'échappée. Un euh, cristal de Balicot et Vita qui sera la deuxième concurrente française après Juliette Labousse. Ici au sommet de la finale. Still for like hours. And I have one. Yeah. I'm so in shock and amazed and overwhelmed. Yeah, well, yeah, that was so. I'm dead. That was crazy. Holy cow, kid. Oh my gosh. Oh.